Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here aboard good old Athena. I'm still very much in the midst of the osmosis treatment I've been working on for the past three weeks, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. I think this is going to turn out to be a five part series, meaning by next weekend I should be ready to start applying barrier coat. No doubt that is going to be a lot less exhausting and a lot more fun than fairing and sanding the entire hull. Sadly, for now, I am stuck riding the struggle bus. I've got fairing compound on roughly half the hull, and I'm almost done sanding it. Today, I am drifting dangerously close to being out of work, meaning there's not a lot more I can do here about Athena because I'm waiting for more fairing compound to show up. Now, that should happen tomorrow, but to be quite honest, it is kind of nice to have an excuse to get away from all the glorious, glorious sanding for just a tiny bit. In response to my last video, I got a few comments saying, why on earth are you wasting time ferrying the hull? Arguing that since Athena is a cruising boat and not a racing boat, there's no need to fair the hull. We can certainly all agree that fairing the hull is a lot of work, but speed has nothing to do with why I'm putting in this extra effort. I for one just want her to look good, and also I want the bottom to be as smooth as possible, because I'm going to be applying cover coat. If I'm able to stick to my little plan, I should be able to show you guys the application of copper coat in roughly two weeks. And copper coat does have some pretty big advantages over traditional anti-fouling, but we'll get back to those in that video. For now, suffice it to say that I don't care too much about the overall shape of the hull, I just want the surface to be nice and smooth. So far, that is going reasonably well. As you can see, I've circled some areas here on the hull, and those are areas where I just have to apply a little bit more fairing compound. And that is what I'm here to do today. This area here is by far the worst imperfection I've got. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but the surface here inside the low spot is kind of glossy, and that's because the sandpaper hasn't been in contact with that area yet. And before I can apply more fairing compound to this area, I do need to rough up that surface a little bit. Of course, the reason I did that was to make absolutely sure that the new fairing compound will get a good bond and not just go falling off in a few years. That would be well, less than ideal. Even though I am waiting for more fairing compound to show up, I am sure I can scrape enough out the bottom of these to take care of those few imperfections. This should be way more than I need. I've gone over the entire hull and fared 30 or so imperfections. And you know what? I think I might just be able to get away with sanding those areas once they're cured, and that's gonna be it. But uh, we'll see you in a few days. It is the next day, and guess what showed up a little earlier today? Yep, glorious, glorious fairing compound. And that means I am all out of excuses. So let's get back in the saddle. First, a quick little side note though. In my last video, you guys saw me applying fairing compound to the side of the hull with this fairing board from FlexiSander. FlexiSander reached out to me and suggested that I try using the fairing board that's just a little bit bigger than this one. And wouldn't you know it, I just so happen to have that fairing board right here. I started out using the smaller of the two boards because I figured this one is kind of big and it might be difficult to control. So I wanted to get a bit of practice in with the smaller board first, but let's just go ahead and throw caution to the wind and take this bad boy for a spin. I love the smell of fairing compound in the late afternoon. Let's go ahead and get the resin and the hardener all smushed together so that it's one uniform color. That looks about right to me. There aren't any more white or dark spots, so let's get this applied to the side of the hull. I 
I've got a pretty smooth uniform layer on here. Now let's get out that big fairing board and remove all of the excess. It always gets a little bit hectic when I start applying fairing compound because there is a pot life to take into consideration. But as you might be able to see, I've decided to try something a little bit different on this side of the hull. I don't know how to explain this in an elegant fashion, but I've kind of skipped every other section. So this area in here is a little bit more narrow than the fairing board is wide. That means when I come back tomorrow and I start fairing this, the fairing board is gonna be riding on two sections that I've already fared and sanded. I don't know if that's gonna make any kind of a difference, but I figured it would be a fun little experiment. I'm almost done fairing the port side with the exception of the keel, and here on the starboard side, I am done with the exception of a tiny little area on the keel. A few more days of this, and I'm gonna be done fairing the hull, which is gonna be awesome. But of course, there's a lot of glorious, glorious sanding standing in my way. Now, one of the recommendations I got from FlexiSander was to use their power sander to do an initial pass before switching to the glorious, glorious torture boards. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, try that later this weekend. I've let the fairing compound cure overnight, and I'd say I'm definitely getting better at using the fairing boards. To me, this looks perfectly acceptable. In fact, the only problem I've spotted with this entire section is a little localized low spot right here, but that I can easily fix. I think FlexiSander was spot on the money with their advice about using the slightly larger fairing board. That surface is almost perfect. But I also got another piece of advice from FlexiSander, and I think I already mentioned it, and that's to use their power sander to do the bulk of the sanding. So uh, let's give that a try. Just as with the manual sanding boards, this thing is flexible and will conform to the shape of the hull, much like the windshield wiper on a car. But uh, let's take this guy for a spin. This thing is a heck of a lot faster than doing it by hand, that is for sure. And if I take a look at the surface, it doesn't look bad. It actually looks pretty dang good. And yeah, I think for me, this is acceptable, but let's just go ahead and get the manual sanding board on there. That is an excellent workout. Now, if I wanted the surface to be 110% super duper extra ultra spiffy, I could go ahead and use some guide code to reveal any high spots or low spots. The theory being you apply a thin layer of this black powder to the side of the hull, and then you start sanding. Any high spot will have the guide coat knocked off of it while it'll stay in any low spots. To be completely frank, I just don't care enough about the shape of the hull underneath the waterline to go through that trouble. Sure, if I had unlimited time, yeah, I would do it, but I don't, and I have a deadline fast approaching, and I still have all of the stuff up on deck to deal with. That means fairing the sides of the cabin top, getting the cockpit all ready, painting everything, and applying non-skit. With that in mind, I am more than pleased with this result. I'm gonna go ahead and save my little container of guide code here for the high gloss areas up on deck where I will need this to get the finish I want. I wanna spend a few seconds talking about this power sander because although it is very fast compared to sanding by hand, I've got a couple of observations. This thing vibrates like nobody's business. And on the one hand, that is good because that's what makes it effective. On the other hand, there are some drawbacks to that. For one, after having used it for about 15 minutes, my fingers started having that weird tingling sleeping sensation. Also, the vibrations make this kind of lively and it feels like it really wants to tip over on you sometimes. And when it does that, it starts digging into the fairing compound with the edge down here. So that's not so great. 
To be fair, that is my initial opinion. I've only just started using this tool and with a lot of tools, there's a little bit of a learning curve and perhaps that is the case with this tool too. So I'll reserve judgment for now and we'll take a closer look at this in one of the upcoming videos. In fact, I plan on making a dedicated video to take a closer look at all the tools from FlexiSander later this fall, because the manual fairing boards and the manual sanding boards have certainly grown on me. I think they're pretty dang cool. I'm hoping the same will happen with the power sander, but if I better get back to fairing the hull. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday morning, and as you can see, summer is over. We went straight from heat wave to 16 degrees Celsius. This weather is certainly a lot more comfortable to work in, and as long as it doesn't drop below 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the next three or four weeks, I will be very pleased. But let's get back to the task at hand. The starboard side is now all done on the large flat surfaces, that is. Over here on the port side, I still have one of those wide sections to take care of way back there. And then there are some small areas on the keel. But other than that, all of the large surfaces are fared. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up, but as you might be able to tell, some of these sections are a little bit glossy. And that's of course because I haven't sanded them yet. So I still have that to look forward to. But yeah, this is the only large section I still need to apply fairing compound to. The reason that aft section is still on my to-do list is quite simple. There's one of these stands right in the middle of that section, and I'd already lowered this stand to be able to apply fairing compound to this section. This feels nice and cured, so I can go ahead and put this back up. Normally you just snug these up by hand and that is perfectly fine, but seeing as I'm continuously lowering and raising the stands, I'm just gonna give this a few taps with a hammer. There we go. Before I go ahead and lower this stand and start mixing up fairing compound, I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of the last little bit of sanding. As you can see, I am not all the way done sanding yet. I still have a lot of glorious, glorious sanding ahead of me, but I'm done sanding all of these sections that are adjacent to the sections where I'm gonna be applying fairing compound. Yep, there should be plenty of room here for my fairing board. Done. When I say done, I am of course only referring to the large flat sections on the hull and only to applying fairing compound. Like I said, there's still a ton of sanding to take care of. And there are also a few, well, let's call them problem areas. For instance, the curvature in here between the hull and the keel, that little radius there is gonna be super annoying to fair. And also up here close to the waterline, when we laid up that little bit of glass, there was a bit of a jagged edge and that's now showing up. So I wanna take care of that with some fairing compound, but now is not the time for that. Now is the time for cleaning my tools. For me to be able to continue using these tools, it is very important to get all of the excess fairing compound cleaned off of here before it starts curing. I've scraped off as much fairing compound as I can. Next step is to wipe this down with some acetone. And there we go. Just like that, it is the next day, also known as Sunday. I cheated a little bit yesterday and got some stuff done off camera. I tidied up here in my little workshop and I also sanded the area underneath this stand here. I figured you guys have already seen enough sanding in this video, so I simply just skipped recording that. But one little tip was I removed the foot on the stand here to be able to give myself better access for when sanding, 
all I had to do was to remove this nut and then I could pull out the bolt and simply just remove the pad. If I want to achieve my goal of applying barrier coat next weekend, I better get busy working on those uh, problem areas I mentioned yesterday. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but like I mentioned yesterday, after we laid up that extra layer of glass, there's a little bit of a wavy edge up here, and I hope I'll be able to sort of hide that a little bit with some fairing compound. I've gone ahead and given this area a light sanding and I've applied some masking tape up here just to make sure I don't get fairing compound everywhere. Some are going to argue that this is purely cosmetic, but I want to make sure I get this as smooth as I possibly can. And that is again just to make life with the copper coat a little bit easier because I'm going to be scrubbing that annually and the copper coat is going to stay on there for 15 years maybe. So it makes sense to put in that little bit of extra effort now. That looks much better. This only took me about 40 minutes to do on both sides of the hull, so I think it's easily worth it. With the little bit of excess fairing compound I had from doing the waterline, I fared the area underneath this stand. And that's pretty awesome news because that means there's only one stand left. I know it would be supremely bad planning, but the stands could easily have become the deciding factor in whether or not I can apply barrier coat next weekend. Because I can only lower one stand at a time. I need to have some fairing compound under there. I need to sand it. Maybe I need to go over it a second time with some more fairing compound. And yeah, but now that I've only got this one left, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to apply barrier coat next weekend. The only thing standing in between me and applying barrier coat next weekend is this annoying radius here between the hull and the keel. It's probably not going to show up on camera, but this has the same sort of slightly wavy texture that the rest of the hull had after we laid up that extra glass. And I would love to get this as smooth as the rest of the hull is now. What makes this such a pain is the fact that I don't have any kind of tool that can really get in there to help me sand this. So if I apply a lot of fairing compound, I'm going to be stuck sanding it by hand. And I don't really have a good way of sanding this by hand. Well, I think this will work, but it's going to be a slow process. So if you guys have any kind of suggestions on how I could deal with this radius, I would love to hear them. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. It looks like I am almost out of shooting time if I want to get this video out by 8 o'clock tonight. Now, I don't claim to be any kind of an expert when it comes to fairing, but I've picked up a few things over the last couple of weeks. The first one is you shouldn't be afraid to DIY fairing your hull. It's not difficult to do. It does take up a lot of time, but you don't need to be an expert. Now, if you're an expert, you can probably do it a lot quicker, but not necessarily better. If you just put in the time, you can get a good result. As the cat skinning aficionados amongst you know, there is more than one way to skin a cat. But I really like these fairing boards from Flexi Sander. In particular, this long one for the hull. This has been a big help. If you want to give one of these fairing boards a try, I recommend you keep the angle relative to the hull a little bit more shallow than I did in these videos. It seems to me if you can keep the angle relatively shallow and a uniform pressure on the board, and this is difficult because the curvature of the hull changes, right? But if you can do that, then you get more of a uniform surface and you don't get as many of the ripples as I've got here. Now the ripples aren't the end of the world, they just require a little bit more sanding. But if you can avoid them, that's certainly a time saver. When it comes to choice of fairing compound, you can save yourself a little bit of time by going with the 625 from the ProSet series from West System. But I know a lot of the yards here in Denmark still use West System's 407 for fairing application. So yeah, either one of these, you can't really go wrong. When it comes to the glorious, glorious sanding, I am afraid I don't have a lot of words of wisdom I can depart because no matter what you do, it is going to be a lot of hard work. Now, I really like the manual sanding boards from Flexi Sander. The good thing about them is there's multiple ways to grip them and that seems to help a lot with fatigue. But yeah, like I said, no matter what you do, it's going to be hard work. And on that uplifting and positive note, I am going to end this video here. While this is rendering, I'm going to get back to some more glorious, glorious sanding. 
Like I've mentioned, next weekend, we're gonna be applying the barrier coat. I need a little bit of a crew to do that because we are gonna do the entire boat in one day. I haven't figured out if that day is gonna be Saturday or Sunday. If it turns out to be Sunday, then next weekend's video might be a day late, but I'll be sure to let you guys know what's going on. And that is gonna be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.